Welcome back to LVB. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to another reaction. And today we're going to be reacting to, I don't know what this girl's name is, Gasoline and Epstein and his girl, gasoline. <laughs> Epstein and his girlfriend, how deep their pedal connections go with Andrew yeah. Schultz, man. And it's crazy because we had just mentioned on the last thing he posted how Epstein didn't even kill himself. And it's funny that he's doing this now. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're watching this reaction, make sure you subscribe to our channel, bro. I really appreciate it. But if you're not, bro. Ghislaine Maxwell, you dirt foot whore. This week, Ghislaine Maxwell, the accomplice of egg dick pedophile and suicide victim Jeffrey <laughs> Epstein, <laughs> the president in the world finally found out how to pronounce her stupid fucking name. I always thought it was Ghislaine, which doesn't sound like a British socialite. It sounds like what's inside a rap groupie's stomach. Maxwell was accused of recruiting, grooming, trafficking, and abusing cabinets full of underage girls, not as a producer at Miramax, but as Epstein's right hand in their child sex ring. Congrats, feminists. Female pedophile kingpins are finally getting the attention they deserve. The patriarch has been crushed like Epstein's windpipe. Their human trafficking operation was over 20 years old, or as Epstein would say, Ugh. They were enabled by a powerful network of politicians, billionaires, celebrities, and Kevin Spacey. Which is weird because he's not even into girls. I guess he's just that into rape. So all this begs the question, why did the arrest take so long, and where the fuck was this guy? Now, some say they were uh, uh, under the radar because they had powerful friends like former yeah, president and sex god. I mean, sex god Bill Clinton, who rode on Epstein's plane 27 times. Now, I'm not saying he knew anything about underage girls, but 27 times? You didn't see a retainer lying around? It didn't make you nervous that Epstein passed out iPads to keep the girls quiet. You weren't curious. When he put his oxygen mask on before assisting the girls around him, it wasn't peculiar that they didn't call it first class, they called it homeroom. None of that, Bill. Um, Their network didn't just include past presidents, but the current one, too. Old Donald used to party with Epstein back in the day before banning him from Mar-a-Lago for hitting on an underage girl. Trump said their friendship fell apart not over Chuck E. Cheese sex parties, but rather a real estate bidding war. In typical Epstein fashion, he refused to go to a higher number and lost out on his development wet dreams. It wasn't just presidents. Maxwell and Epstein were connected to royalty, too. They were close personal friends with human penguin Prince Andrew. The prince loved everything about Epstein, especially the teen. On five occasions, he visited Jeffrey's estate in the Virgin Islands. Virgin? I'm not even going to make that joke. That's too childish. Like their girlfriends. They would go on shooting holidays together. What kind of shooting? Skeet? In 2010, the Duke of York was so disgusted by the news that his longtime pal was a pedo that he decided to fly to New York and party with him for four days. He even stayed at the Diddler's townhouse. Why did he stay there? But you were staying at the house of yes. a convicted sex offender. It was a convenient place to stay. Yeah, convenient yeah, if you yeah. want to have sex with children, you Scooby-Doo villain-looking motherfucker. And you would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids. Presidents, royalty, oh. but don't leave out <laughs> the billionaires. Yeah, I mean, if you're trying to run an international pedophile ring, you need money from countless secret sources, right? Nope. One guy, billionaire business boy and Epstein's sole client, Les Wexner. He owns Victoria's Secret. The secret, she's 13. I mean, look at this fucking scumbag. He looks like Spock's grandfather. Ears like that. And you didn't hear any rumors at all? Wexner isn't the only one. All, all these Holly weird dudes, these freaks and pedophiles, they're all... They all do this shit, bro. And just like I used to be on Facebook, I don't, that's why I don't like being on Facebook anymore. You see all these little black kids. Specifically, specifically, black young woman who disappeared and he never bring it up on news yeah, ever. ever. It's horrible. One, Bill Gates met with Epstein after he was a registered sex offender. Don't worry though, billionaire, one hundred times over. Bill Gates had a great reason. He needed money. Bill was fundraising for his charity. Hey, Bill, the funds have been raised. Remember that thing, Windows? Did you call it that because that's what you guys were peeping into? Oh. Anyway, hey, not now, Clippy. Wait, what? But who knows? They probably have a lot in common. Bill wants to inject foreign kids, and Epstein was like, hey, me too. Now, when you're doing all this shady shit, you're going to need some legal advice, and who better to give it than piss-tooth lawyer Alan Dershowitz? When he's not selling soup back at a diner, he's busy defending those who have fallen through the cracks of the justice system. O.J. Simpson, Harvey Weinstein, and of course, Jeffrey. I mean, this guy's gotten off more predators than Epstein's masseuse. When asked if he had ever gotten a massage at Epstein's house, here's what he said. I kept my uh, uh, underwear on. During uh, the massage. Why do you distinctly what? remember that? You fuck. Oh my you can't God. Have sex with your underwear still on. You just got you stick your. You see no blacks, Mexicans, any other races, just all old white men. 
Yeah. Doing this grimy, dirty, Terry Crews. nasty shit. Terry Crews, old white man, grabbed his balls because he thought he had all this power and he knew that Terry couldn't do anything to him. I know Terry wanted to destroy that nigga. Never. He, gra- he, he just rips him in half. <laughs> <laughs> you see how big Terry Crews is? I saw, I saw, I saw comfortable they are with this. Your little St. James through that hole in the front. Also, you don't like massages? I don't like massages particularly. So why the fuck did you get one? I don't like carrots. If I'm offered some carrots, I'm going to say no. Especially <laughs> if they're baby carrots. So you're probably thinking, how come they were never arrested before this? Well, they were. Epstein was charged the first time in 2008, and he pled guilty, registered as a sex offender, and had to pay 36 victims. 36! How do you even keep track of that? You must be an expensive filing cabinet. Anyway, he served barely a year in a private wing of the jail where he had the freedom to leave six days a week. The illegal deal struck by then-district attorney and Geico spokesperson Alex Acosta was so sweet, Ghislaine almost recruited into sexual slavery. It was negotiated by Dershowitz, who kept his underwear on the entire time. Good boy. So what does all this mean? I'll be honest, I don't fucking know. And anyone that says they do is full of shit. Maybe Epstein didn't kill himself. And maybe Epstein isn't even dead. And maybe Ghislaine and Epstein were working on behalf of some government intelligence to blackmail powerful people, not that blackmail. After all, Ghislaine's dad was an Israeli spy, and her sisters wrote software for the FBI. But with everything we know, how is anyone still calling this a baseless conspiracy theory? How come conspiracies are only baseless when they're questioning powerful politicians, but not when it's weapons of mass destruction in Iraq? Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of conspiracy theories are stupid as hell. The earth isn't flat. We're not controlled by lizard people. And no one's turning frogs gay unless you count Kermit getting fisted. But questioning suspicious events in good faith shouldn't be considered fringe. It's what we should all be doing. I mean, to believe that some government intelligence would sexualize underage women in an attempt to gather intel on a population for political control, that's totally crazy, right? I mean, that could never happen. No way. Maybe the question we should all be asking is why conspiracy theories, which have always existed in the dark corners of the internet, have all of a sudden become mainstream. Maybe it's because of the complete lack of trust in news. I mean, how can we trust a media that appears to be pushing some type of bias agenda and a president that constantly calls into question the validity of any news at all? And let's be honest, sometimes a conspiracy is more comforting. It's easier to believe that a virus is an enemy bioweapon rather than a random natural disaster that we have no control over. Each and every event should be scrutinized in good faith, and our opinions should be accepting of new evidence. We should all be vigilant, but not vigilantes, skeptical, but not skeptics, cynical, but not cynics. And remember, if you're ever in the company of a registered sex offender receiving a sensual massage from an unknown woman, keep your underwear on. Thanks, guys. Peace. Yeah, I say it's weird how all this stuff is linking together. You remember when we did um the what's it called? The what's his name? Dave Chappelle and how it was like them switching families and he the white guy only wanted to fuck with the the underwear on still through the little yeah. people. Oh, uh, that's funny. You see, <laughs> this is weird. All this stuff is kind of coincidence. Just, if you enjoyed the reaction, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe and share, and we'll see you next time I would be. Peace. Peace.